what's up, everyone? Welcome to the intro. I'm your host, Jess Huddleston. Today on the show, we have rising star Devin Cole, whose addictive pop tunes have an empowering feminist edge to them. Here's Devin performing high and dry. I've been burned, lesson learned. Best to stay unconcerned in the early days. In the get to know you phase. Keep it light, it's all right. If you want to stay the night, but let's communicate. I gotta get this straight. Because um, I got a tendency to read between the lines and make something out of nothing. Oh boy, you got me bugging. You do feel so good to me I wanna make you mine But I'm reckless with my loving Baby, tell me now Are you gonna stick around? I don't wanna let you in If you're gonna let me down So baby, tell me now Are you gonna make me cry? I don't need another lover Leaving me high and dry No Thank you so much. I really what it. a sweet little ditty. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I would call it. A oh, little ditty. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> well, y'all are a funky bunch. I'd love to meet who you brought today. Um, on keys, we have Timothy Berger. Um, on guitar, we have Kevin Sassy. On drums, we have Zoe McMillan. And on bass, we have Devin Goping. Awesome. You're from Calgary, mm -hmm. Cowtown, yeah. Cow home of the Stampede. Mm -hmm. You've also lived in Kingston. Yes. You live in Toronto. You have some family in L.A. Mm -hmm. How do you think the various locales that you've spent time in have informed what you're making here? Well, I definitely, there's a bit of country influence from Calgary for sure. Yeah. Um, which I love. You know, I love, I've always loved country music for the songwriting yeah. and the storytelling. Um, and then from Kingston, I would say that I definitely sold my oats when I was living there. Mm -hmm. um, I went to university there for four years. And a lot of the stuff that I write about has been informed by the relationships that I made there, the mistakes that I made, mm -hmm. um, the people who ghosted me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just that kind of stuff. So definitely those two places have definitely influenced my music for sure. I'm a born and raised Kingstonian, so I echo the mistakes made in that city. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You get it. I get it. We get it. Yeah. I am sensing big pop queen energy in your future. Thank you. I feel like you could exist within the likes of Carly Rae Jepsen, maybe a Maggie Rogers, but there are also some jazzy undertones in what you're doing. So I'm curious, what genre space do you see yourself breaking into? Um, I think we're kind of still in the exploratory phase. Um, I definitely have some R&B inclinations and I'm not really sure where they come from, but 
I've gotten that a few times. And so I've kind of been dabbling recently in a bit of groovier, um, funkier kind of R&B stuff. Yes. And I think that's definitely our favorite to play as a band together because we can nice. all kind of rock out. Country and R&B definitely have some overlap. So um, I love just kind of pulling influences from both. My first introduction to you was via a music video of yours where you were singing into a sex toy. <laughs> Needless to say, I liked you immediately. Oh, thank you so much. It's funny watching that. Some people would definitely be like, oh, man, she's pushing the boundaries. She's pushing buttons. To me, that just signified freedom and fun. Well, that was my first music video ever. Oh, wow. Um, and I was so excited about it. I definitely knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to have like a little mini version of me. Mm -hmm. um, and she even had her own little dildo. Aww. And I made it out of clay on a Saturday night. As one does. As one does. <laughs> um, and it was just so much fun. It was just the embodiment of self-love and um, sologamy is what I've heard. Okay. Not monogamy, not polygamy but sologamy wow so, like spending time with yourself i'm learning new things i know i learned that word the other day and i was like i'll be using it that's what it is yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah totally i'm so glad you touch on self-love because for me that's the strongest undercurrent in your music there's so much in there about feminism and independence sexual empowerment freedom all of that good stuff but self-love is definitely a moving target for a lot of people and it looks differently for everyone mm -hmm. tell me what self-love looks like for you self-love to me, I would say is about self-acceptance, which is hard. And it's been a journey for me, definitely, as it is with everybody. Um, I have my own insecurities and my own flaws and learning to accept that about myself rather than trying to change mm -hmm. um, is really what I think about what I think about self-love. Mm -hmm. And um, like this might be TMI. But no such like thing. this morning I was in the shower, showering for today, and I thought about shaving my armpits. And then I thought, you know what? It doesn't really matter if I have body hair in this moment. No. Um, I'm sorry. That was too much. It's absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. We don't care. Okay. Happy you didn't. Yeah. So I think that's what kind of self-love is about. Not, not shaving in the shower. That's right. Yeah. That's it in a nutshell. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about this next song because I think this is going to be a really big one. I love this song. Um, on Call It is about unapologetic regret. Um, and it's actually based on a scene from New Girl, which is one of my favorite shows um, for any watchers out there. Mm -hmm. Jess. Yes, um, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited about it. It's one of my favorite songs I've ever written. And I'm really trying to be honest in it, as I say. The Amazing. Yeah. Unapologetic regret is a fantastic way of wording that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, thank Thanks. you so much. I was lying when I said I'm over you I was high at the time, it's no excuse But I'm trying to be honest for once There might have been the problem with us I don't ever say the things I really mean Wrote a song about how good I've been lately But really all I do is wait
I love that song. Oh, thank you so much. I, I think that's going to be a big one. Hopefully it'll be a banger. We'll see. <laughs> I think it definitely will be. One of my favorite things that you have done so far is on TikTok, you remixed Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines to be about consent, <laughs> which is just the best. Thank you so much. And rightfully, it went viral. Thank you. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. That was a really, really exciting time for me, probably one of the most exciting times in my career so far. Um, I was already kind of in the game of rewriting songs um, to add my own verses or from a different perspective. And I heard a podcast talking about the atrocity that is Blurred Lines, even mm -hmm. though it's so catchy. Um, the lyrics definitely missed the mark. So I jumped on it immediately and I wrote it within like half an hour. It was so exciting. And as soon as it went out, I was so glad that the public received it that way. And it was just very exciting and honoring for me to see survivors of sexual assault. Definitely. You know, share their stories in the comments and feel like that was a safe space where they could, you know, have some healing. So it was really, really exciting. Robin Thicke, if you're out there and you want me to do a feature, you want to rewrite history you want to change it up yeah <laughs> I'm here call me <laughs> good for you honestly that's really important and I feel like you made that message very accessible for people thank you so much I love it thank you you are very good at that with the TikTok though thank you the way that you use your music to relate to and comment on other things that are happening in entertainment of the moment whether it be movies other music other artists celebrity in general mm -hmm. tell me about using your music as kind of pop culture commentary? I think that's just fun to do. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, before I was even on TikTok, because it kind of scared me, um, I wrote a little song called, <laughs> I think, Silver Lining in Self-Quarantine. Like I wrote a little ditty yeah. about finding the silver lining in self-quarantine. I've always loved to do things like that because it feels like an assignment, you know, right. like you have a goal and I'm very much an academic mind. So I'm like, OK, this is what we're trying to achieve. This yeah. is the rubric. Um, <laughs> so I've always loved doing things like that. So it's always fun for me to write my own verse or something because I have kind of like a guideline. It's it's harder to write your own stuff from scratch sure. than it is to have like an assignment. you know. But this is a good way to get those creative juices flowing, I feel. Totally, totally. Yeah. And also so make connections fun. with other people in the business, other people making music. Yeah, absolutely. Who would you love to collaborate with oh my gosh Spencer Sutherland okay he is so cool I'm manifesting a fall tour he doesn't know it yet <laughs> but I'm manifesting to be on his fall tour that'd be really really cool I also love Maude Latour she's mm -hmm. a massive inspiration of mine Maggie Rogers as you said yeah um, I love her um Leon Bridges I, I could go on and on and on <laughs> these are all great yeah if anyone's watching please hit Devin up Spencer <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about TikTok. Let's talk about the talk because okay. it's such an interesting and fascinating space to watch new music and new artists right now. Yeah. It's become this machinery for discovery. Mm -hmm. How do you think about it as you're cutting your teeth as an artist and, and kind of getting moving with your own music? How do you think about using TikTok? I think it's definitely the best vehicle for not only sharing new music and seeing what pops and what people are drawn are drawn to mm -hmm. on TikTok, but also to make connections with new artists. You know the the duet capability, how you can you know hop sure. on or you know add your own verse or just harmonize. It's just the best place to discover new artists, meet yeah. new artists, um, find new music, and. I, I found a lot of great music from the For You page. You know, just scrolling through my page. Um, Same. Yeah, that's really cool. A lot of people aren't quite there yet. You know, mm -hmm. they're sort of rejecting this new mechanism and what it might mean. Totally. But I think if you lean in and you acknowledge that there's so much collaboration and creativity mm -hmm. within that space, it's not just funny little videos. There's a lot of really artistic things happening. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you so much. Talk about this next song because this next song has 1.3 million streams on Spotify mm -hmm. alone. This mm -hmm. has been a big song. Tell me about it. Yes, this is my biggest song and it was the first one I ever released um and if it hadn't you know done sort of well I probably wouldn't have had the I probably wouldn't have had the confidence to continue going along with this you right. know I was actually I came to Toronto to do advertising wow. um and then when it started to gain some traction I was like mm. so I wrote this when I was 16 it's about an unrequited love um <laughs> A summer love, if right. you will. Um, and it's just a really fun, upbeat song. And it means the world to me. Yeah. 
Good. Well, I can't wait to hear it. Thank you for coming in, Devin. It's been such a joy talking to you. Thank you so much for having me, Queen. I, <laughs> thank you. I just wish you all the best, and I can't wait to hear July for the whole year. Thank you so much. Thank really you. I appreciate it. Thanks. All fixed up in my goodbye dress I thought time made hurt and hurt less Until I met you that one summer day I have nothing to remember you by But the scuffs on my heels and the tears that I cried You broke my heart in the best kind of way the best kind of way the summer came and went and the days got colder do you still believe in me now that we're older do you still dream about someday maybe one day i'll try to keep you here to lie for the whole year Somehow you fit right into place Now I'm counting the space Over land and sea When you said you liked me best in blue I saved that very sundress for you For when you found your way back to me Yeah, the summer came and went And the days got cold I hope you enjoyed this episode of the intro. For more, you can hang out here or you can head over to cbcmusic.ca slash the intro.